gentlemen, these jobs in the past three weeks point to only one man, the lone wolf. And I'm not basing that statement on my own opinion. I got word from the Paris police that he was headed this way. I'd like a crack at your lone wolf, Chief. You're going to get it, Benson. I got a tip that the lone wolf intends to lift the Bancroft pearls. When? Tonight. So take all the men you think you need and surround the house. But remember, lay low and get him coming out. We want to catch him with the goods. You can stop your worrying, Chief. He's as good as in the bag. They never get by Benson. Benson, come here. I said you were going after the lone wolf, the slickest jewel thief on the loose on either side of the Atlantic. There was only one man who ever even knew who he was, and that was Crane. I don't think he really knew, only had a hunch. If Crane was only on the force now, why didn't you get him back, Chief? Maybe you think I haven't tried. When he retired, he bought a little farm upstate, and it's hard to separate him from his flowers. So in the meantime, will you try to fill his shoes? Crane was a real detective. That's all, Benson. Crane, Crane, that's all I ever hear. You think he was the greatest detective in the world. Crane, Crane. planted behind every daisy in that garden. They never get by, Benson. surrounded. Coming up the front way, back and around the side as well. I really hate to inconvenience you, but you can see how it is. And you know, I've been a bit uneasy all evening. There's nothing to fear. My nothing ever gets back. You shot too late to get this guy Caesar. About 2,000 years too late. Oh, dear, it was dreadful. We can't stand here talking like this. You've got to tell Mr. Bancroft. He's at the reception next door. You've got to go. I've got to go. No, oh, I'm stationed here. You go. Thank you, officer. Nerve of him. I gotta go. Please don't shoot. Uh, 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 I'm the butler. Butler, eh? That's all right with me, Tarzan. But just keep them hands up. <laughs> Clenched. Lola Pina, 
out, Marcia. I'm cutting in. Oh, hello, Mel. I like your friends. Yes, they're nice, dull, and respectable. They do the same things over and over in the same way. one foot on a rail. Now, what did you expect me to do, a swan dive? <laughs> oh, Julie, I'm covered with embarrassment. Proposed to again? No, 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 the emerald misbehaved. What? Oh, you startled me. If something happened to the catch, would you help me fix it? Oh, of course. Tell me. Has that crowd of stuffed raccoon coats down there become any more interesting now that they're working for their fathers? Oh, Julie, they're not half bad. Marcia, you're a flirt. That, my dear, is the nicest compliment of the evening. Oh, there's something wrong with this catch. I think I'd better put it away for the night. What'll I wear instead of the pendant? You don't need to sing, my dear. You're a very beautiful young woman. <laughs> and what's to be done about that? Now, that's a silly question. You should fall in love. It's very simple to say fall in love, Julie, but it isn't something one can make happen. Oh, what a lovely night. Far lovelier than the nights in Europe. Marsha, there's something on your mind. What is it? Oh, a lot of vague things, Julie. Moonlit Lake, perhaps? A song full of shining words? I don't know. That settles it. You're in love. Who's the man? But there isn't a man. That's the trouble. On a night like this, with a moon like that, and music, when you could almost breathe romance in the air, there should be a man, shouldn't there? There are 20 downstairs. And all nice boys, too. Yes, all nice boys. But I want to meet someone as romantic as this night. If I do, and he smiles, I'll know he's a man. Well, you won't find him up here. And if we don't hurry downstairs, we won't find any men down there. Come on. Come on. small, pleasant world. The last time I saw you was in Rome three years ago. Oh, I can't leave you behind, not this time. such an early age. Well, now, don't give up. Nowadays, there's nothing that science and little patients can't cure. Yes. Whoop, come on over here with me. There, there, now, ring around the rosy. Whoa, sit down. That's it. Now, everything's going to be all right. You feel that? Sure. Good. Now, keep your eyes closed. Now, then, open your eyes slowly. Doctor. Breakfast. The shaving mother. Well, there are sixty reasons, Terry. They're all over the house. I can't. 
can't walk out and leave my guest just to marry you. Well, how about tomorrow? Oh, I have to buy a hat tomorrow. Well, if you won't marry me, then dance with me. I'm sorry, Terry, but this dance is taken. Well, here I stick till the taker comes. Well, I'm sure he'll be here any moment. What's he dressed as? Well, tell me. It's a very difficult costume to figure out, Terry. I don't know whether you'd call it the Duke of Wellington, or Sitting Bull, or uh, Uncle Tom. No, there's no Uncle Tom or Sitting Bull at the party. If there is, he's too late for this dance. Beg the young lady's pardon, Terry. He's arrived. Hello, sir. I've kept you waiting. Who are you? Uncle Tom. In modern clothes, but the same old fugitive. I'm glad you've come. Now, look here. All right, don't look here. He takes hints very nicely, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, but, but who are you, really? Uncle Tom. Without sheriffs? Without hound dogs? Now, they're chasing after me. They should be crossing the ice any minute now. <laughs> well, a crowded dance floor is as good a place to hide, is it? It's perfect. We do well. I've never risen to such heights before. It's amazing. It is, isn't it? Marsha's room is the first door at the head of the stairs. And remember, you climb stairs by lifting one foot above the other. Oh, it's divine. You want to rate yourself? Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I meant the night. I hear they're getting shorter. It's a shame, isn't it? A dreadful shame. Please, will you forgive me? For what? For kissing you. But you haven't. I mean, that is, you're not going to. But I am. Are you? And you did. It was simple as that. It's partly my fault, but I can't forgive you. I don't want you to forgive me. I'm not sorry. I beg your pardon, Miss Stewart. Yes, Joseph. I can't locate your aunt. There are two gentlemen to see her. They say it's important. How important? From police headquarters. I'll see them. Show them in. Yes, Miss. The sheriffs? Mm-hmm. With his hound dogs. This should be fun. I suppose you're going to tell me you're the butler. Sorry to break in like this, lady, but the name's Benson, and I I'm never... Are making too much noise? Did the neighbors complain? The house next door's been robbed. We're looking for a dangerous criminal. We think he might be hiding somewhere in the neighborhood. Oh, I'm sure you'll find him here. The house is full of dangerous criminals. Just take your pick. Now, there's Captain Kidd, and Jesse James, and Alibaba, and... Oh, uh... no, no, no. Will you have no. all of your guests unmasked, please? Just so that you'll be able to identify them? Why, of course. We've decided to turn the clock ahead to high midnight. All those not removing their masks will be arrested for carrying concealed faces. Masks off. <laughs> Get rid of that emerald. Get rid of it? Somebody beat our time. He was gone. I'm afraid somebody did beat our time. You know everyone here, do you, Miss Stewart? Yes, everyone. You may search the rest of the house, though, if you like. Oh, no, that satisfies Benson, Miss Stewart. What might his pedigree be? One of the best in Europe. Let me see about that. We'll move along. Sorry to have bothered you. But just a moment. I think this gentleman is one of your friends that I haven't met. You're quite right, you never have. Why, uh, this is Tom, Colonel Thompson of Kentucky. Mr. Mallison, Colonel Thompson. A pleasure, a great pleasure. It's quite all right, gentlemen. Dance?
Colonel, eh? Well, 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 from the past. You remember me? Well, of course I do, Nora, in that little apartment on East 12th Street. It's Leon, and the apartment happened to him in Vienna, at 44 Gordegasse. Oh, yes, I remember now. Except, did I catch you going through my desk, or was it the other way around? You caught me. Well, it all worked out very pleasantly. You come into the higher brackets. What happened to Mr. Powers? Police retired him. Madison has a much better clientele. Only he gets a little jealous. Jealous? He and Miss Short? Oh, no, nothing like that. The jealous is purely professional. Well, even so, that little scene now was a bit too dramatic, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Forget it. Now that I've found you, I want you to join us. Join you? Oh, no, no, I'm afraid I can't. Oh, you don't understand. I want you to join us at a small party tomorrow night at the rendezvous. Morpheus place? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not interested. But you are. The party's for Marsha. And other steward jewels. Obviously, you're interested in one or the other. Is it really as obvious as that? Oh, dear. Tomorrow night, then, Colonel? All right, tomorrow night, Mrs. A Malison. Is he the third? The fourth. Have some punch. Thank you. So what? So I took a shot at him and bounced the slug off Julius Caesar. Nice work. How about that hat and coat I was telling you about? Yeah, they ought to give us a swell lead. That's what I figured. Well, figure again. The hat comes from Budapest and the coat from some London tailor who isn't even in the book. What about those footprints in the garden? They don't help either. He must have the soles of his shoes tricked up. One foot's larger and in a completely different shape than the other. So he walked in and he walked out, the same as he'd been doing for weeks. He's fast company, Benson, out of your league. This job needs a man like Crane. Since he left the department, everything's gone wrong. I got a plan. That's fine. When you get it finished, make a doghouse out of it and crawl in. That's all, Benson. Built a doghouse. <laughs> Who's he think he is? Talking to me that way, huh? I don't have to stand for that sort of thing. Not me. I got to stand an offer from a big city out west to take charge of their keeping Tom problem. But not me, not me. I'm sticking to Mac. I'm the best man he ever had around here. Why, even as a cop on the beat, I showed unusual ability. Stranger, I'm a man of reputation. Maybe you've heard they never get by, Benson. Will you please go in, Mr. Crane? Crane? Did you say Crane? Yeah, Crane. A detective. Did you ever see a real detective, Benson? <laughs> Why don't you tip me off? But now there's a detective that's in my class. Me and him could have done each other a lot of good swapping ideas. Sit down, Crane. You know what time of the year it is? Mac, my garden's coming in. I work all May and June, and now I get a chance to see results. You keep wiring me to leave it for this place. I wouldn't have come down here if we hadn't pounded the pavements together, Mac. Thanks. Well, I'll help you. If you'll help me with Maggie. Maggie? Who's Maggie? There she is. That little posy's gonna take all the medals at the garden show, Mac. I didn't dare to leave her at home alone, so you'll have to detail a man to take care of her day and night. All right, all right. I'll put Benson on it. Uh, Benson, say, don't you ever let me sunshine in here, Mac? What do you know about flowers? Flowers? Tiger flowers? He was one of the greatest light heavy... He'll do. Just stand by. I'll give you the details of this assignment later. Thanks. Well, what's troubling you, Mac? Your last wire sounded worried. I'm on a spot. In the last three weeks... Hey, just a second, Mac. Just a second. I mean, it was bad enough when you quit to take a sheriff's badge in some hick county and left me with a bunch of stooges who can't even catch a cold. 
Now you come in to do a tough job and you bring posies. What's the matter with you? Hey, excuse me. Say, you ain't sore about Maggie, are you? Sore up. Listen, the lone wolf's operating here again. What's that? The lone wolf. He's back. Well, what have you been wasting all this time for? He's the only man ever got a decision against me, Mac. Come on, what are we waiting for? About three weeks ago, we had the first of a series of jewel robberies. Infernal effrontery. Well, special type of tropical plant called the Akuba. That's a good specimen, too. Where'd you get it? That was a purchase. I suppose you're going to tell me the master's not at home. Mr. Lanyon is not at home. <laughs> Fine, same old answers. Wait here, please. Where's the Jenkins? It's Crane. Oh, dear old Crane. He's waiting for you out there. You you don't want to see him, do you? Uh, Jenkins, you take life far too mysteriously. Of course I want to see him. I've missed him. Very well. I just wanted to warn you. Thanks, Jenkins. But we can handle him, can't we? Well, we always have, sir. You are in the linen. Still spending big, isn't it? It's not money. It's a matter of good taste. Argyles from Scotland. Go down, make a handkerchief. Hi, Crane. Everything's hidden under the carpet. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of taking up the carpet. That's impolite. Marsha Stewart. Little different from the type you usually go for, isn't she? She's a little different from any type I've ever met. Yes, a little wealthier. Now, that's a detail I hadn't noticed. I found the difference in her eyes, gorgeous eyes. What color would you say they are? Off hand, I'd say they were blue-gray. That's just what they are. Uh, Crane, would you mind bringing me a cigarette? You know, Crane, you're getting harder to fool every day. I can see I was wrong about the eyes, but I can't be fooled about the girl. She looks awfully nice, Lanyard. Nice? Man, you ought to have your eyes examined. She's perfect. And the young lady has one of the finest emerald collections in the world. That remark, you old so-and-so, strikes me as containing malice of forethought. All right, I'll come to the point. They're talking about the lone wolf again. Oh, really? So you might stop playing detective for a moment and give me a hand with that bath towel. Headquarters has him spotted for the Bancroft job the other night. Well, it's a matter of opinion. Yeah, that's why I dropped in to get yours. Mine? Sure. You never can tell who can give you the right steer. Besides, I wanted to drop in on an old friend anyway and see how he was doing. And have a look at the picture of his latest girl. All right, Crane, I do have a hunch. I have a hunch this lone wolf you're talking about is just about through. No more prowling. Done for, if you need. Good. In all the years I followed this man, I never did get to him, but there was always a hope that I might someday. It's become a sort of an ambition. But if you say he's quit, I'll forget that ambition. You can, Crane. I finished him myself last night. I'm counting on you being right about this, Lanyard. 
If you're not, I won't rest till I swap his name for a number. I'll be seeing you around, I hope. So long. Glad you dropped in. I still don't like that man. Why, Mr. Lanyard! Why, that's the Bancroft string, isn't it? How'd you guess? Well, I don't understand. Why, this morning you were positively brooding. Talking about your misspent youth, repairing your ways. You made quite a little talk on the subject, sir. Avowing, in a manner of speaking, that crime does not pay. It does not pay, Jenkins. Why, you made a solemn promise, sir, that we were going to mend our ways. Did I? Well, don't take it so to heart, Jenkins. Oh, I see. It was all a pleasant, but you didn't mean it. And everything you told Crane was just to mislead him. <laughs> we're going on just as we have, aren't we, sir? No, Jenkins. As of today, you and I are honest citizens. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. This is incredible. It sure is incredible, Chief. It's this flea water that fixed her up. She's in the pit of condition. She shouldn't be too pink, according to this. You're worried about a begonia, and we're up against the toughest proposition we ever had. Here's a thief giving things away. Well, what's troubling you? He's taking himself off your hands. It's an act, some kind of a build-up. They don't make a switch like that for nothing. I think you're wrong. I still can't understand it. I wish you'd stick around, Crane. All right. You better take Maggie up on the roof for afternoon sunbath. I'm not interested in your explanation. I don't care what happened last night. All I know is that I've spent a bankroll paying your bills all over Europe. You meet a society girl by the name of Marcia Stewart. You become friends. You get her the position to grab the biggest jewel collection in the country, and what happens? Well, something went wrong last you night. You don't have to tell me that. What happened was... I don't care what happened last night. All I know is you fell down on the job. Oh, stop crying, Morphe. It's all fixed. Fixed? What's fixed? Four of us will be here tonight to dine, dance, and... The four of us? The guests tonight will be Miss Marcia Stewart, Mr. Mallison, myself, and Michael Lanyard. Lanyard? Who's he? The smoothest, cleverest jewel thief on either side of the Atlantic. I'm not cutting anybody else in on this. I'm afraid you have much choice. Miss Stewart has cut him in already. She likes him. I don't care how much she likes him. But you don't even know him. Perhaps you'll be more interested when I tell you that Mr. Lanyard is the lone wolf. Then why did you tell me? Oh, shut up. Lanyard, the lone wolf? Without a doubt. How do you know? We once lived at the same hotel. And the Stewart girl likes him? Smart girl. Well, I think that we shave it. I'll do the thinking from now on. That's Prince McCullough, the gambler. He made a fortune last week at Pimlico. No, not really. And who is that with him? The owner of the other four horses in the race. <laughs> See that man over there? That's Red Dugan. Not the Dugan we read about the newspapers. That's right. Oh, Mr. Morphew, do you suppose you could get him to autograph a napkin for Aunt Julie? She'd be thrilled. You'd be a cinch if you could write. Oh, Mal, this place is fascinating. I'm so glad you thought of coming here. Suppose we go to one of my private dining rooms and make this an exclusive affair. Oh, I think that would be nice. Sure. Let's do that. All right, if you'll excuse me, I'll arrange it. Pardon. Jenkins, do you see that window on the corner? Yes, sir. Very beautiful, sir. Well appointed and all that. But if I might add, a trifle menacing, sir. Right. Well, Jenkins, you keep your eye on that window. And remember, this is one time that the play starts when the curtain comes down. Yes, sir. And what part do I play in this little drama? You call the police. Uh, when the curtain comes down. Right. When that... Uh, what shall I tell them, sir? I'll leave that to you, Jenkins. Very good, sir. You mustn't do that. You, you'll scratch the car. Run along. Run along! 
I just polished his car this morning. And he's going to polish it again, too. like Christmas Eve, Leon. Where is that big surprise? Here it comes now. How do you like him? Oh, Leon, this is a surprise. It's all right. I'm not intruding. Oh, well, you're the big event of the evening. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Mr. Lanyard. It seems to be a pleasure every time we meet. Am I entirely forgiven? For what? For your thievery? I was robbed the night of the party. A picture of mine was stolen. With so much treasure about, I couldn't leave the place empty-handed. <laughs> Familiar? I believe that's where we left off. We might pick up again at the same place. Shall we? Love to. Excuse us. I almost did several times. What changed your mind? Oh, there were a lot of things I wanted to say. I'd rather say in person. I think I'd like to sift this out. Well, here's a table nobody seems to be using. Presenting Marcia Stewart in person? No, not now. Later. I want to tell you about myself. But I'd like that. I'm afraid you wouldn't. Sorry it was late, sir. Well, that's all right. Oh, what a nice surprise. <laughs> Just what I wanted, too. What's your sauce? Just a little. Everything satisfactory? Yes, fine, thanks. Tell me, how long have you known Madison and Leanne? Oh, I met them in Europe several weeks ago. Why? They don't seem to be quite your sort of people. They're much more interesting than my sort of people. Do you think that's wise? I mean, these sudden friendships? After all, I've only known you through two tangos and uh, a Welsh rabbit. <coughs> Shall we dance? Well, yes, I'd like it. Excuse me. Let me recommend the Welsh rabbit. It's excellent. Well, of all the nerves, Do you want me, boss? No. I just want to see if you could walk. Extend yourself and stay sober tonight. I might need you and the other boys. Tell Malison I'm all ready. He can bring the party up. Tell Malison I'm all ready. He can bring the party up. What do you say? What? What do you say? <laughs> Again. Well, what's happening? Oh, the seven system Mal gave me is marvelous. Really? What system are you playing? It's very simple. Seven, 14, 28, and 35. Any multiple of seven. Sounds almost too good to be true. Oh, you know how it is when you get a run on a certain set of numbers. It's almost uncanny. You wouldn't like to try it yourself, would you? No. Not for me, thanks. We have other games might interest you. Shall we try one? Oh, no. I'm doing very well right here. How about you? I'll take a look. That's fine. Come on. It's a pleasure.
nice place, but where's the game you spoke about? Oh, stop acting simple, Lanyard. You know we're after the Stuart Jewels. We? Cigarette? No, thanks. I have my own. And you know we won't let you pull that job without a beef from us. Well, beef away. It's free country. Or have you a monopoly on the jewel market? This is no time for cracks. I'm making it easy for you. You're going to operate with me, and I'll declare you in for 25%. But 25% is tops, you understand. I have a lot of dough tied up in those jewels. Yes, I'll bet you have. Mr. and Mrs. Mollison must have run up a pretty expensive account in Europe. <laughs> when we do anything, we do it in a big way. You do yourself a lot of good operating with me. No sale. I have a system of my own. I like it. But it's behind the times. You need a mob today, organization. You know, I'm not very good at organization. Board meetings, that sort of thing. I appreciate your proposition, Mark. I'm not you, making you a proposition, Lanyard. I'm telling you what it's going to be. Oh, really? I like you, and I hate to turn you down, but I'm afraid I must. Go ahead. Oh, no, Mr. Lanyard, after you. If anybody does any back patting tonight, it's going to be me. Thank you. I'm going to try the same plan again. This is amazing. <laughs> I wonder how difficult it's going to be to get out of this place. There you go, being stubborn again. What sort of a host do people think I was if I let you leave so early? We like you, Lanyard. We want to keep you here. Now, don't start figuring that way. It's a long jump to the street. And here's where the place starts. What do you mean, starts? We've been doing this for an hour. And it would be a pleasure to continue, but it's way past Aunt Matilda's bedtime. And the poor soul won't close her eyes unless I call to wish her good night. That's precisely what it is, sir. And believe me, I'm very happy to have met you in a social way. <laughs> All right, boys, I'll take the wheel. You wait outside. Wait till Aunt Julie hears about this. She always said that gamblers win and farmers lose. What do you suppose Aunt Julie would say if she knew the sort of company you were keeping? Oh, she'd love it. I wonder. I'll wager it'll bowl her over when she reads the paper that Marcia Stewart, the owner of the famous jewel collection, has been running around with an international jewel thief. Jewel thief? One of the smartest and slickest in the world. Well, what do you mean? The gentleman next to you will explain. What's he talking about, Michael? Michael is the name you know him by. With us, he's known as the Lone Wolf. Oh, that's ridiculous. I don't believe it. It isn't. It isn't true, is it, Michael? Dion, I want to go home. Certainly, dear. That wasn't a very nice thing to do, was it? Oh, I don't know. It's a gentleman's privilege. He can introduce his guests any way he pleases. Will you have a drink? Sure. I always like to drink to a winner. Mastro. Mastro. Would you give the gentleman a drink? If you can take your hand off that gun long enough to get it. I'm awfully sorry I asked him. Let's not talk about it, please. Another little treat in store for you. A weekend visit to Jersey. Oh, with the playmates here? Oh, to know them is to love them. Either one of you boys sing bass? That's trouble. Get down and see what it is. Stay here with me. Sure. You came here by yourself. I'm not with you. Please, it is charade. Good, I've been expecting you. Don't give your right name. What name will I give you? You give them mine, I'll give them yours. Are you a fool? Okay. Where's Marsha? I don't know. Children first. No, women and children. Baby, you can't believe. There now, we're all right. It's 
small world, isn't it? But please, I want to go. You can't. You have to stay here with me. But I must get out of here, I tell you. Which way do you want to go, up or down? There are policemen waiting at both ends. Well, if it's a matter of preference, I'll take the policemen. From what I saw at that raiding party, they're really not worth meeting. Well, they can't be any worse than... than... Than the criminals they chase? Marsha, I've got to tell you something. I won't listen. I'm afraid you can't help yourself. I want to tell you about that lone wolf that Morty talked about. He doesn't exist anymore. I can't believe that. It's the truth. It happened the first night I met you. Oh, no. People don't change like I that. I know they don't. But this one has. It's quieter now. I think we should be able to go. The Marines arrived almost too late, Jenkins. I called the police, sir, just as soon as the shade came down. I told them the Butcher Willens, sir. Butch. Oh, they understood. I told them the murder they wanted was in the gambling den across the street. They seemed delighted. What are all those marks on the car, Jenkins? Oh, a little game of wits, sir. Oh, how'd you come out? Well, I'm happy to report, sir, that we defeated the enemy again, sir. Yes, sir. We always do. Do you mind? Thank you. Good night. Good night. you tell me why I shouldn't see you again? Why I should never see you again? There are dozens of reasons. Please, all of them, one by one. Well, I've been notorious, I've been disreputable, I've been one step ahead of the police all my life, I've been... It's no use, Michael. All those reasons don't mean a thing. Can't you understand? Yes, of course I understand. You've never had a chance to see those faults. Since the first day I met you, those faults have been part of the past. Dead. I want to believe you, Michael. Marsha, I have no right to be going on like this, but I've got to tell you that I... I... I love you. Are you quoting me? No. I'm speaking for myself. Darling. Oh, you'll have to excuse me for being such a wretched hostess. I've kept you in the hall all this time. Nicest hall I've ever been in. And remember, on the way home, you're not to climb any second story. Promise? I promise. And no stealing milk or morning papers. No stealing milk or morning papers. <laughs> Will you dream sweet dreams about the steward care? Not about the jewel collection, though. You'll have to allow me just one more theft. Oh, Michael. That's it. Oh.
I don't want your fingerprints on us. What do you say? My way, you pup. Where's Mike Lang? I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Lang. Never is... mind the butler stuff. Where is he? Where is he? Hi, Crane. How are the posies? Never mind the cover-up. I've seen some dirty, slimy tricks in my time, Lanyard, but you've come in with a new low. I fell for that routine you had to me on the Stewart girl. I never figured you for a high-pressure ladies' man, but this is curtains. You don't think I did this? I've got a perfect case against you. Well, if you have it, it's a frame-up. Sure. 60,000 guys sitting in jail today, and they were all framed. I've got you, Lanyard, and I'm sending you so far up the river, it'll be just a trickle where you're going. Oh, now, listen, Crane, I can't deny I was in our house last we night. We know all about it. You were in that house a whole lot longer than your invitation called for. Our record shows that you left Miss Stewart at 4, but we didn't pick you up coming out of the grounds for 4.30. What'd you do with that half hour? You happen to notice the moon last night? What moon? The same moon the schoolboys watch. You won't believe it, but that's what I did. I leaned up against a tree, smoked a cigarette, and watched the moon. Lanyard, you're slipping. We found a cigarette butt in the same room with the open safe. It had your fingerprints on it. How'd he get there? Maybe your man on the moon can explain that. He might make a guess. Yeah? Well, I don't have to guess. Come on, get your hat on. We'll go down and pick out a number. Now, listen, Crane, I'll take the rap for any case you got against me, but not this. I didn't do it. Give me a chance to prove that. Give me until midnight. You'll get your chance before 12 men and a judge. But listen, Crane. It's no use. I told him I'd bring you in, and you're coming along. Now step on it. All right. Uh, Jenkins. Yes, sir. Bring me my hat and gloves. Very good, sir. I'm sorry, Crane. All right, Jenkins. I hate to do this. I've got to clear myself. You won't give me a chance, so I'm forced to take it. Turn around. Go on, inside. You'll never get away with this, Landed. You won't get out of the city. I'm not going to try. I'm going to bring in the people that did this. Clear myself with you and with Marcia Stewart. If I don't, I'll be in your office at midnight. was the Stewart collection. Oh, dear. Oh, but it's not that. It's the horrible insult of that man using you for a silly, childish dupe. Oh. It's just the idea of degrading yourself by falling in love with him. Last night you told me you found the one man that everything you looked for you found, and now you... Hello? Where are you going with us? Oh, we're leaving town, aren't we? We may be leaving town, Jenkins, but if we do, it'll be after midnight tonight, and Mr. Crane will be buying the tickets. Well, you aren't going to be sentimental about keeping your word to Crane, are you? No, Jenkins. That adds up to more than that. Well, as a girl, may I offer? Uh, it is better to have loved than lost. Much better. Yeah, very good, Jenkins, but a little out of place. And, sir, if you forgive my saying so, I, I humbly suggest that we scramble. Scram, Jenkins. Scram. No one has greater faith in your ability than myself, but it strikes me that a million dollars worth of stolen jewelry in a large city is something of a needle. Needle? In a haystack, if you follow me, sir. And you've got just uh, 11 hours and 20 minutes. So I beg of you, sir. Come on, Jenkins. Get going. Oh. We're spending the afternoon. 
afternoon housebreaking. Put that down. How'd I know it was you? Matt, are you nervous? Well, who wouldn't be with all that jewelry about? Forget it. By 7 o'clock tonight, we'll be on our way to Europe. With nothing to worry about but getting seasick. Yes, but... But what? Well, that Stuart collection's gonna be plenty hot. The police... That's the lone wolf's worry. He's on the spot with the cops, not us. Besides, no one will connect us with the Stuart job when they find out who's going to Europe with us. Well, who is going with us? Miss Marcia Stuart. THE Miss Marcia Stuart. She's going with us? Certainly. Leanne will talk her into it. She's all over there now. Poor girl's so upset about the whole thing that she'd be glad to get away. Yeah, are you sure she'll fall for it? <laughs> so sure that I'm going over to buy an extra ticket right now. You better come along. I'll buy you a drink. You look like you need one. Sitting at home brooding won't help matters any. But I can't leave right away. Not so soon. The sooner you leave, the quicker you forget all this. By the time you finish Biarritz and Mies, it'll be even hard to remember what happened. It all sounds very interesting. It could be a lot of fun. Hello, Jenkins. Good evening, sir. Any luck, sir? No. Please, Mr. Lanyard, now we've got to leave town. You found nothing in Mr. Morphew's apartment, and now you searched the Leon person's room, and that was our last hope. There's one more chance, a slim one. The railroad terminal is just two minutes from here. Besides, it's so beautiful out of town at this time of the year. The leaves are turning, and you need a rest, and then there's a shooting. Well, it won't start. They'll get us. They've got us. Please, let's leave town. Let's leave here first. Annoying people. Well, it was a lot of fun while it lasted, Jenkins. Why, you don't mean to say that you actually intend to keep that appointment with Mr. Crane at midnight? That's just what I mean. Oh, no, sir. Anything but that. We'll find a way out. Mm, I'm afraid not. I've been browsing around a bit, sir, looking here and there, and I finally tracked down those two uncouth persons Mr. Morphew employs, Mastro and Custer. Say, we might get hold of one of those men and give them a thorough going over. Oh, no, sir. Discretion is the better part of valor. It strikes me that strategy would be the proper course, sir. Any suggestions? Well, I have a plan whereby we might be able to use those two unspeakable creatures, if I may suggest so. Yeah. It involves a telephone, sir, in a taxi cab. You could, if you had to, tell a very convincing lie, couldn't you, sir? I'm afraid I could, Jenkins. And you could also tell a very exciting tale about hijacking the Stuart jewels, I imagine. Jenkins, you're a genius. Oh, no, sir. Just a gentleman's gentleman in search of a taxi cab. Telephone, Coster. Oh, me? No, not you. <coughs> Hello, Coster. I just got a line on something I thought you'd like to know. Yeah. Yeah? Well, how do you know? Well, that's it. You can take it or leave it. I'll see you later for the payoff. Hello. Hello. What's up? The lone wolf's on the loose. He broke away from the cops and he found out about the boss apartment on the west side. How? How should I know? I just got a tip that he's on his way there now to hijack our store stuff. You better call the boss. What do you think I'm doing? What do you say? No answer. Well, what are we waiting for? Hey, taxi. Come on, boy. Let's get going. Where to, sir? 547 West 86th Street. I beg pardon, sir? 547 West 86th Street. Oh, please come again, sir. It, it, it's the ears. 547 West 86th. I get it. 547 West 86th. And step on it. Very good, sir. What did he say? Wait a minute, boss. I ain't through yet. Hot dog. Whole bits.
Can't you look where you're going? What's the idea? I beg pardon, sir. Well, where did I report a stolen car? Right here. What kind of a car? Oh, this car, sir. Who stole it? Why, we three gentlemen. What do you say? I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Stewart, but I'd like to have another look at that carpet in the library. I believe this is the third time today you've looked at the carpet in the library. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I have a friend waiting. Yes, I know. Mrs. Mallison. She's sailing on the Normandy tonight. Do not by any chance checking up on Mrs. Mallison. No, no, no. You see, I'm what they call a shipping news fan. I read the sailing list. Always a chance somebody might be sailing, I'd want to send some flowers to. You see, I raise beautiful posies. Very interesting. Is that all? Oh, just one thing more. What kind of perfume do you use? Perfume? But what has my perfume to do with this? Oh, you never can tell. We're dealing with a smart man. It might be the one clue we need. Mr. Crane, look at the carpet in the library. Sample my perfume, read your shipping list, do anything you like. I can't help you any further. I'm sorry, my dear, I have to run. I, I've just made up my mind. I'm going with you. Will it take long to pack? But that's the easiest part of it. I'll make arrangements. As soon as they're ready, they call you. Thank you. That's fine. Bye. Goodbye. The carpet you wanted to see is in the library. Oh, I've seen the carpet. It had a flowered pattern. Got to take a look at the garden now. But why? Flowers in the carpet, flowers in the garden. Never can tell. Might be a clue. Of you? Listen, don't ask any questions. We're in a jam. Well, talk fast. Crane knows we are sailing. Well, what about the stuff? If everything's clear, I'd get it out of the apartment. Well, they'd never find it. That fireplace is the first spot they'd go to. Hurry. I'll be right over. So the girl in the grass skirt says, come to the South Sea Islands and see some more. <laughs> I say, don't you get it? See some more. You see, she met the place. Some more. Yes, I, I get it. The girl from Samoa said, come and see the South Seas, eh? Ah, that's right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. The girl from the South Seas said, come and see Samoa. It's over here, boys. This is set em up exercises. First movement, hands above head. I set up. Two, take a deep breath. And hold them up. 
Up on your toes. I said on your toes. That's one. Two is down. One up. Two down. Now all together. Count off. the showers now. Say, where'd you get these posies? Here are eight of them I just picked up. I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Morphew. You see how it is? Little mistake. They happen, you know. Your apology comes too late, Crane. It won't end here. No, I guess it can't end here, can it? You'll hear more of this from the commissioner. Won't you please tell me where you got those posies? Come on. Get out. That was smart of you, Mel, to get rid of that stuff. It was plenty hot. Don't give me the medal, Morphew. Give it to Leon. She's the smart gal. Me? I've never been near them. What is this, Morphew? You told me you were taking care of them. I told you that. Certainly, over the phone. Now, just a minute, Morphew. Let's get this straight. We all get a share of that Stuart stuff. What did you do with them? I have them in the mantelpieces this afternoon. I put them in there. You put them in and you took them out, you dirty double-crosser. I'm a double-crosser. You're too tired. Now, you... now, no, no, children. You get nowhere calling each other names. We'll just hop down to police headquarters and talk things over quietly with the commissioner. You tell him what I did, and I'll tell him what you did. Every time I get set to go to Europe, somebody always slaps me in jail. Madam, my arm. Copper, my shoulder. No, no more statements. I don't care when your noon edition goes to press. And I can't tell you who made the arrest. Now. All right. What are you dodging the bouquets for? They're ready to plaster your name on every front page in town. Because I didn't make the arrest. Gentlemen, we both know gets credit for that job, Mac. Mike Lanyard. Mike Lanyard, is he in on this? And plenty, but on our side of the road all the way. It'll take a lot of talking to make the district attorney believe that. Yeah, well, I'm prepared to do a lot of talking. And for Lanyard, when I get him to the DA's office tomorrow... We'll pick him up tonight. Oh, no, hold it, Mac. We'd sort of be out of place tonight. Tell Mr. Lanyard, Mr. Benson's here to see him. Uh, Benson? Yes, the, the man they never get by. You must be mistaken. Mr. Lanyard's not here. I only know what I've been told, brother, and I was told to leave this. Thank you. He must think I'm the fuller brush man. It's a message. The gentleman they never get by. Benson by name.
But this is for Mr. Lanyard, Joseph. I told him he wasn't here. You may go, Joseph. All right, I'll talk. You don't have to. I hoped you'd return to the scene of the crime. The theory's been very consoling. Michael, what's that? That doesn't belong here. It's not part of the collection. Well, it's just a little something I picked up. Picked up? Well, there it was all alone on the counter. Nobody was looking. All I had to do was to stretch out my hand and pay the first installment. Now we'll never get out of town.